One huge part of the Startup Nation story, first of all, is the universities. Um, the great University of Israel, like the Technion, were started in the 1920s. When, you know, the country, there was almost nobody living in it. It was desperately poor. It was violent. The last thing you think about, I mean, it's still draining the swamps and things like that, is starting great universities. And yet because, and this is, you know, one of the Jewish aspects of the story, because of the Jewish emphasis on education, our, our traditional determination to have great education, we were already thinking about founding the great universities of the country. And, you know, 80 years later or 100 years later, these universities are, have been at the core of the startup nation. The speaker is not really meant to be the, the, the pitch person in, a, something like, in, a, in a place like this. But I got to tell you something. I, I think you probably even underestimate the importance of what you're doing in supporting the, in the Technion. Because um, first of all, it's not just that the, the Technion produces, is the, premier, is the premier startup nation university in the sense that uh, if you scratch almost any startup, there's got to be a Technion graduate there. I mean, it's so central. Most, uh, most of the great uh, entrepreneurs and engineers uh, coming out of, uh, in Israel, I don't know whether absolute terms, whether a majority, but it's so substantial, you're going to find a Technion graduate just about everywhere. Um, but I would put it this way. I think probably many of you are familiar with uh, Rambam's eight levels of, of charity. Um, you know, the, the lowest level is to, is to give money when you, you don't really feel like it and, and you, someone told you you have to. And the highest level in Rambam's uh, hierarchy of charity is uh, to actually give someone a job so that they don't need charity. And I was thinking about this and I think that there, there, maybe there should be a ninth level of charity. And that's to support a great university. Because if you're supporting the Technion, you are, you're not just creating one job, you are sustaining an entire economy. You are, you are at, the, at the epicenter of the startup-centric economy that, that, that built Israel. Israel, uh, almost about half of Israel's exports are from high-tech. The economy would be nothing without a high-tech. Um, it's the center of everything, and Technion is the center of high tech. So the Technion is the center of the Israeli economy. Uh, and that, so that's the generator of jobs. That's the generator of things like Better Place. That's the generator of technologies that are changing our world. And so you can't imagine a bigger multiplier effect than supporting a great university. So um, that really gets to the word miracle in the title. You know, when I moved to Israel about 16 years ago with my wife, um, all our children, we have three girls and they were born there. I thought that, I think like most people, that um, the hope of Israel being a light into the nations was something, you know, something that we aspire to, but it's not something we could really do at the moment because, you know, we're fighting all these wars and not such, you know, it's a work in progress. There's a lot to do in Israel, but you know, having being enlightened to the nations was uh, was more of an aspiration. But when you know, in writing this book with Dan, I realized that you know we want peace to come desperately, but the amazing thing is that Israel hasn't waited to be enlightened to the nations. We're already doing it. And this is how we're doing it. The inventor of this thing. Uh, came from the Technion. It's got two cameras in it. It's got a light source. It's got a battery. It's got a transmitter. It's disposable. You swallow it and it takes a movie as it's going through your intestine and beams it out to the doctor who's in the same room or the other side of the world. Uh, and this was the dream of one man that uh, was working on uh, missiles and, and aircraft and he, he thought, well, you know, I, he's in miniaturized cameras and things like that. And think, I could turn this into a pill. And it took him you know, 10, 20 years. It was not easy, but he did it. And now this thing is being sold all over the world. It's saving lives, and, and there's just no end to it. I mean, there's, uh, we're having a tremendous impact on the world through technology. And I think it's an impact that's only going to grow. Uh, the pace of change is increasing. 
uh, and Israel is going to be at the center of it all. And But to do that, we need those great graduates. We need those great engineers. We need those great technologists. Uh, so uh, I wanted to thank you for what you do and, uh, and tell you how important it is and, and encourage you to keep doing it. Thank you. The Technion is a gateway to startup nation. The book had incredible impact on many segments of American society. For me, it was a red carpet treatment when I talk with people from industry or with others. It portrays Israel in a completely different way that people never thought about it. They didn't perceive Israel as the source of the memory on key. They didn't perceive Israel as the source of uh, almost everything to do with technological innovation in the last 20 years. And as I said, the link with the Technion is simply incredible. And I'll give you some examples in addition to this uh, uh, pill that we swallow, developed by a Technion graduate from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering. The memory, the stick memory, was developed by a Technion graduate, Dov Moran. Mirabilis, a company that uh, I would say put on the map instant messaging, ICQ. Yossi Vardi, Technion graduate. I'm sure that every one of you will use Adobe Acrobat and every form of compressing of data. Two Technion professors, Ziv from electrical engineering, Abe Lempel from computer science. Without their development, this entire field of taking data and compressing the data wouldn't develop. We spoke a lot about Azilect. We spoke about stem cells. I don't know how many of you know, every laboratory in the world, almost every laboratory, we use stem cells. We use the H9 line developed in Haifa by Professor Itzkovic. So in fact, if you look around the world, citizens in almost every country come in touch with Israel and with the Technion almost every day when they open the computer and use Acrobat or use memory on key. When they send messages, when they go to the hospital, when they take their medications. And this is in a country, 63 years old, with a war every six and a half years, that a huge chunk of its budget is allocated for purposes unrelated to education. And a Technion with an operating budget, which is one-tenth of an American university in the Midwest. So this is the miracle. Thank you very much.